So my question is, is when you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you realize that you're working on such a phenomenal project that really touches people's lives, what does that feel like? I mean, you, you can't think about it every morning. <laughs> Most mornings we're doing loads of other stuff as well. <laughs> uh, but the days that you're working on the job there, or when it you know comes out, like now the next series comes out, it, it's very humbling. It's, incre it's incredible to be part of something that's that massive. And the, when, when we started, we didn't know it was going to go there. I mean, it was a, it, it was a surprise. Yeah, I had no idea it would sort of change our lives to this extent. Like, I didn't think I'd be sitting in Chicago in front of like, how many people? About thousands. It's crazy. We have several friends. It's yeah. so, so cool. It is really humbling. I, I do feel really lucky that we get to do this because I'm a geek myself. I, I used to go to these cons before this happened. Yeah, that's completely crazy. Can you crazy. talk about when you got the first call audition and asked to be a part of the process? And let's start with you. Okay. <laughs> well, mine's slightly different. Um, I had done an audition about five years previous for the movie Hot Fuzz with Simon Pegg. <laughs> Really strangely, um, the part I auditioned for was played by Rory McCann, who plays the Hound. He actually got the part. So, yeah. so it was the same cast and director for Game of Thrones. So I got this call, and it said, we've got 15 minutes. Um, we need to find a child um, to put on your back. So, yeah, so we went up to this 40th birthday party, and I was surrounded by a sort of 40 year old ladies, obviously, and um, a small child. And I had, I had to, to kidnap this child for the party and carry him around the garden <laughs> whilst all these ladies watched me in a circle. And it was really fucking bizarre. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get the party photo. I mean, I, I didn't understand it. I was like, well, I mean, I don't get to say anything. But then, you know, as time obviously went on, I love the party photo. And I mean, I love the guy. He, he's such a good part. Um, I, got, I got home, I didn't know what Game of Thrones was, I said to my mother, I've just auditioned to this thing called Game of Thrones. And so you didn't know what it was? I didn't know what it was. Wow. No, I didn't either. My mother that's, that's was great. a huge fan of the books. And she, <laughs> fell, she really fell off a chair and she was like, take the part, take the part, Christian. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and the rest is history. So she was a real stage mom. Of course she was not a stage mom. <laughs> yeah, but for, for this, uh, yeah, she was very encouraging. And it was, in, it was new to you as well? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the book was, in, I, I'd never heard of it, uh, or George R. Uh, Martin, who's amazing. But uh, one, I thought, yeah, when I went for the audition, they, they didn't give you the entire script, so they gave me a few sides. And it, it was one scene from, from, the first, from the first season with me, like the little boy, and I was like, what is this? No, I didn't. And I, I got a bag with the Molotov jukebox, and we were touring. Uh, we were going to a festival, so I was at a festival, and there's, you know, a lot of mad Fire festivals, and I bought some mad, like, sort of ivy and flower headpiece because it's kind of such a wild. I wore this kind of weird brown dress that kind of looks like a bag, and, and I had some handcuffs, obviously. And, <laughs> and I went to this audition kind of fully, like, dressed up myself because I don't have any information, I'm just gonna go full, full, full. And uh, it worked, I could have gone either way, they could have thought I was mad. I think now, what's wonderful about um, how technology has changed the making of television and films is that a lot of sets now can also be computer generated. So you can be dealing, you can be on the sound stage, and often a lot of the sound stage is black around you. You just have a, a, a few props and tables. And is it like yeah, that on your program, or no? You're thrown right the whole set. You can get lost in the set. You know, we're in a forest. Mm -hmm. Like those are real trees and real rain and yeah. real air. Yeah, real dead rabbits. Real dead rabbits. <laughs> and what's it? How long? How long will the typical shooting day take for you folks? A seven, day. seven to six, twelve hours. Yeah. So you and, and, and you are in significant costumes and, and makeup and everything. So what's your report time? Seven. What time do you get there in the morning? Oh, I'll, I'll pick up to about five, five thirty. Yeah, five thirty. Yeah, and then we usually awful. Eight, and you know, then it, then it's really cold. Most most of the time, we're really cold. Yeah. So I go for a sauna to try and like, help myself be alive again and swim, and then we always go to the bar for whiskey. It's great. And it begins again. Yeah. Hey, you were mentioning before that the genre was new to you and that the, the Game of Thrones was new to you as yeah. well. Um, 
if you ever relied on fans then to sort of educate you or, or get you up to date or, or sort of uh, help you uh, sink a little bit uh, closer into the, the world? No, not really. I don't really understand. Well, well the fans, fans, fans ever sort of helped you to have a better understanding of uh, the world? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes they ask me questions that I'm like, wow, I never thought mm -hmm. about that in that way. But, I mean, you know, when you get a role, obviously you read all the books, so you become a fan of yourself anyway, of that whole world anyway. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read the books. Oh, I love it. No, the books are fantastic, apparently. But, um, <laughs> I've sat on a stage and only recently in, in, in Brooklyn with George R. R. Martin and I've sat and looked him in the face and I've said, no, it's George, I have not read your books. So if I can do that to him, I can do it to anybody. So. You know what's so wonderful is that this genre for the longest time was neglected. It was seen as sort of this side genre and now really it's where cable television is going, it's where major motion pictures are going. And, and as actors, what do you think that says about business and recognizing the importance and the uh, appeal of the genre? Um, I think it's about collective consciousness, really. I think things come and go, you know, suddenly it's like, ah, now it's sci-fi's moment. I think it's, it, and some, soon it'll be something else. Could it be something to do with escapism? Because, you know, all, yeah. all the same problems and stuff in the world. Recession. Yeah, people want to better. Climate change. Yeah. yeah. People want to sort of forget about their problems for a while and get involved in a fantasy world, but who wouldn't? Okay, but it is a fantasy world. Do you find sometimes that, um, you know, there are those of us who have trouble separating the fact that you're actors and yes. <laughs> you're not the parts that you play? Yeah. Oh, there's got to be a story here. I'm trying to think of one. Well, I get it constantly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, people obviously aren't being for real, but, you know, it's in people's favorite line is, oh, it's so good to hear you talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Really. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there, there are some people who take it a little bit too far. Nobody here in Chicago. Nobody here in this. Uh, yeah, Chicago fans, you've all been amazing. Yeah, you really have. Yes. Yeah. Man, of course. <laughs> it's been a really good day. But yeah, some people do have difficulty um, thinking you're not your character. <laughs> now, the costumes you wear, I can't imagine what a costume shop must look like for Game of Thrones. <laughs> Mine's very special, mine's basically a bag <laughs> with like bits of dead animal on it. And that's about it. I love, I love my costume because in a way it means that you don't have to think about looking pretty ever. Like I just walk in looking rough and then throw some mud on my face and I wear a bag. It's great. And then you can concentrate on the acting. It's, it's really, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, my costume, it's been the same costume since day one. And there's this thing they do called breakdown, and it's like they put all the mud and <laughs> all the like, pieces of down, as, as Natalia said. And they, they can't wash that off, so obviously it's never properly laundered. And you can literally smell my costume from about a mile away. It smells, it smells like a barnyard. It's awful. I get some into character. Is there like an extra clause in your contract that says the, the, the costume will be washed every Yeah, well, it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> and then for season four, they just thought they would add a whole layer of dead rabbits. Thank you, Natalia, that was you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, like, see. Now, since, since you uh, hadn't always read the books, has the script come to you and all of a sudden you said, I can't believe we're going in that direction? Something totally surprised you. I don't think I'm ever surprised by Game of Thrones. Um, like, I never expect, I think you can expect the unexpected from the show. So you were surprised by the red wedding. When I read it, I was like, <gasps> what are you talking about? <laughs> when I was in Brazil, I was like, screw this book. And my brother was like, are you about to get a period? What's wrong? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, I was so angry. I was so angry. <laughs> what was the moment? What was the moment you realized that this was more than just a successful, that people with successful shows and then there are shows that go beyond success? Was, what was the turning point for both of you? Well, I think for me it was seeing the sets and how, how much money and, and, and sort of talent and time HBO would put into all the, all the costumes, all the sets. But really, when Winterfell was still standing, um, it was like being in a real castle. Yeah. It, it smelled like a castle. Um, there were goats. Goats. <laughs> yeah, and pigs. Yeah, real pigs, dead pigs, live pigs. Um, it's just, it's just surreal. I mean, if they're going to go to the trouble to create that size of a universe, you just know it's going to be so massively huge. 
people, it's so easy for people to buy into. And also as an actor, it's makes it so easy to do your job because you're in this real castle and you don't have to imagine. You can really be there. For both of you, uh, first question is, uh, you work with some of the youngest actors uh, pretty consistently on the show um, and they have aged over the course of time. What, uh, what's that experience been like, first of all, when they were, you know, in their first season and then, and then more recently? Um, I like it. I think it's good that they're growing up. I don't know how, I mean, it's really strange, and Isaac really now has a beard. <laughs> he looks like he's a proper little man, you yeah. know? So that's interesting. Okay, so do you feel like a, a big sister or a role model? Or? Role no. model. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I knew that was coming. No, so. no. But I love, I love working with kids because they remind you of, that it is, you know, we're not saving lives here. We are telling stories. And it's about having your imagination like a child. Be getting that child part of your brain alive. And so that's why I love working with kids because for them it's so, it's, it looks so much easier for them because they can just get into it. So that's what I love about working with Yeah. I mean, I, I can't believe how, how different the children look in four years. Yeah. Um, Makes you feel old. And it really does. And Isaac, obviously, I have a different challenge with Isaac. He's <laughs> <laughs> you know, not like, you know, like a WWF wrestler. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's still very light. There are three stages to Isaac's um, evolution there was small and light, and then there was. Um, Tall and light, and now he's just tall and heavy. <laughs> and who knows who tomorrow? He's probably like seven feet tall. But yeah, yeah. Thank you, Christine, for one of the best drinking games of all time. Oh, thank you. Well, good. Good. <laughs> Hi, next up. I'm Maui from Hawaii. Um, uh, aloha. <laughs> aloha. <laughs> um, I just want to know who each of you would want to be on the Iron Throne. Also, Natalia, you're a mega babe, and you're so awesome, and I love you. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I always say her name wrong. Brian. Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely, I can show you that. How about you, Sarah? Okay. Um, really, I want to say Stark, because I think the Starks deserve a little payback. <laughs> <laughs> Say Bran, but no, I think Bran will be, in my opinion, not spoilers. Um, in my opinion, he'll be concerned with bigger things. Actually, I think Maisie, um, Arya. Maisie, yeah, Arya. Arya should. Queen of the Ninjas. Yeah, and she should marry um, Gentry. Maybe quite a bit. Gentry. I mean Gentry. 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 Film on location all the time, out in the rain and the snow and the cold. How do you deal with just like the, the physical hardships of that? Humor, <laughs> uh, coffee, lots of coffee. Yeah, coffee, 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 coffee. Sausages. Sausages. <laughs> yeah, fry ups. That's what I do. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really a breakfast person, but on set, most of says you need to fuel. <laughs> yeah, everything, eggs, bacon, just because you need it for. The for your body to keep warm. Yeah. I mean, you're always either too hot or too cold. Yeah. You're either sweating. If you look carefully, um, <laughs> there's, there's a scene underneath the, the, the wall yeah. we did, and like, it's, it's an icy tunnel, and you can just see me and John Bradley West, and the sweat is just running off. I don't think we're supposed to be in the ice. <laughs> if you look at it, there's, there's all extremes. You're too hot, you're too cold, you're too wet, you're too dry, it's too windy. You know, it's, it's just horrible conditions. That's just my own mind. My mind. What's it like uh, to be around uh, Peter Dinklage? What's it like to be around Peter Dinklage? Oh, I, I haven't done any scenes with him. He's someone that I, I met um, in a hotel room in LA. We had a great night. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I've done one scene with Peter. Um, he, he's, he's a cool guy, you know. Um, he's very funny. Has a very dry wit. He reminds me a lot of Terry, actually. You know, <laughs> but um, he's a really cool guy. And I know there's all these sort of um, memes and images of people who are being on the Iron Throne. 
Yeah, I want to be on the Iron Throne as well. Like, I, like, who doesn't? You know, I, I think he needs to learn a few more words first. <laughs> deal with any shrinkage problems that you have during your mid -set? Shrinkage problems? Yeah, okay. Well, first of all, it was a prosthetic. So, yeah. Yeah. What are we talking about? Big yeah, penis. Yeah, I have to say, the first thing, one of the first things that I, when you saw it, you grabbed it. Oh, yeah, grabbed it. It was like, oh. I mean, it was Thank you for that. Yeah, mine was inside there. <laughs> Actually, the first time I was... <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, I've been there thanked. <laughs> the first time I met my prosthetic, um, it was on Richard Madden. He was running around the car park with his, with his strap to him. Uh, also, they, they made two versions, and there was one with my sort of grey hair, and one with like really tight, sort of afro black. Pubes in it. Like, that's not for me. <laughs> this penis is not. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's been recycled. I don't know if the things have been on the work and on the productions. <laughs> is this the first time you've talked about this? In, in no. The people are all constantly asking. No, about it's, it. it's, it's one of the favorites. It's, it's all over the internet. So, yeah. And, uh, are you on Skagos? I'm a what, sorry? Are you on Skagos? That's where you are. That's where your character is. Oh, he's really good. Thank you. And I have to get the boots. Wow. Yeah, probably still there. Yeah. Thank you for that. Great job, Okay. I'm John from New York. Hi, John. Hi, John. Uh, my question is for Natalia. Um, being a part of both Harry Potter and Game of Thrones, those are two very intense fandoms. Um, which is more intense? Like, who has the crazier fans? I think uh, the great thing is, I think I think Harry Potter have the crazy fans because um, unless this, the best thing about Harry Potter fans is the, the young kids, all the young kids are even they're amazing, all the kids are even inspired to read books, and, and their parents who also fall in love with it. But there's also the, the, there's a bracket that there, there are some very intense like fifty year olds that are just like really you know kind of wow or left field. Um, and she told me that ahead of time and put me in my place. But, like, I, I, I love Game of Thrones fans, I love them, they're obviously much more adult. Yeah. And I love that, I love the whole, oh, we're, we're all into the same sex and death. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take you back to Harry Potter for just a moment? You were talking about kids. Are you noticing that another generation is picking up the genre? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, when I, when I can't go to conventions, I still meet young kids that finally go into them, so them, it's, you know, it's... So there's, it's, there's it's, eternally 10 and 12 year olds yeah, that have come yeah, back to you? Yeah, it's fantastic. And then, okay, and this is one of those cliche questions that as, you know, as a reporter I'm going to ask you. So okay. then, do you think as an actress, or sometimes you're afraid that you'll eternally be thought of as Tonks? No, because my character's too small. So, mm -hmm. I, think, I think if I was a much bigger role in the Harry Potter things, I think obviously, yeah. But, and then, of course, you've got your current character, fantastic. So, yeah. you're sort of jumping out there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. How would you react? What would be your reaction if you received your next clip and your character dies? Mm -hmm. I want it to be amazing to my violence. A drawn out horror. <laughs> yeah. There has to be something dramatic. But uh, knowing my luck, I'll just be fined. And he was just fine buying a hedge. Dead. <laughs> Thank you very much. What's something else you would love to see portrayed in some of your TV version? Maybe something you'd be part of? I know exactly the answer to this. Um, I, I, I don't think it should be a series, I think it should be a, like, a film. A trilogy, and um, there's, a, there's a writer called Tim Howie, and he wrote Wall Shift. I met him, Wall Shift to Dust, and I would literally give my left ovary to play Juliet. <laughs> It's amazing. I recommend all of you read this book, these books. They're amazing. Did you get on that? Hugh Howie. Yeah. The first one is Wool, and then Shift and Dust. Hey, Chris. Yeah, there, well, there's two. There's a fantasy series by an author called David Gamble. Um, I think uh, the first book's called Legend. I think that would be a, that would make a really good series of books. But um, there's also a comic from 2000 AD. There was a character in there called Slain. 
Um, I think he would be a really, really good, he's like a Celtic he's warrior. Dead. I think he's kind of based on an Irish um, folk hero called Kurt Olin. He's like the Hound of Ulster. Um, he would uh, be a really good um, transition to screen. And thank you to both of you. Just one. Thank you guys.